Alexis Santos uh, with Engadget, and we are in the Space Shuttle Atlantis. Yes, this is a uh, hands-on, I guess, as you can call it. Uh, can't touch too much except for the handlebars here. Um, this is the, uh, I guess, the cockpit, as you'd call it. Um, uh, we have two seats up here, um, but the, there, there would be four seats normally, but they've removed them so we can get in, and it's really cramped in here, but uh, I'm pretty much speechless. Uh, <laughs> And I'm sitting in a spaceship. So the computers here were removed for preservation. Yeah, they're, they're still in, oh, they're still in. Those this are is just. Um, oh, they have secrets on top. That, uh, yeah, we're not powered up, so uh, we heard you guys were coming with it. We put some overlays up there for you. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> Only the best for you guys. I've seen it a thousand times, yeah. does it wear off? Yeah, yeah. every once in a while you have to you know, bring stuff show. back and see, this is a show. Yeah, it's not a, not a car. Right. <laughs> And, I mean, the big reminders we get Of course, everything needs a power button, and uh, technically this is an auxiliary power button, but still, it's on the space shuttle lens. Through these windows, in the rear of the cockpit, you can catch a glimpse of the shuttle's cavernous cargo bay area and its remote manipulator arm. Okay, so maybe we got a bit ahead of ourselves by showing you the cockpit first, but this is how we got inside the orbiter. This room, which is sidled up to the space shuttle, led us into Atlantis by squeezing through a hatch. As for the signatures on the walls, those are the autographs of folks who've worked with the space shuttle program, or who've been lucky enough to pass through here. We're going into Atlantis. Yeah, I listen to you. I listen to you driving in. Oh, uh, this is surreal. Uh, I think I can fit through. Okay, you're going to have to come this way. Okay. Right up those stairs, you'll find the cockpit. But down here, you're looking at the mid-deck, which was a multi-purpose room of sorts with space for storage, crew activities, and even the restroom. The flight crew is upstairs. So they'll do some time up there and we'll spark you guys out. All right. Yeah. All right. The space station came about, they had to move the airlock. When they went to California, they moved the airlocks to the other side of the bulkhead. Columbia still had theirs in, because they didn't do any space station missions. <laughs> Underneath the flooring here is all your environmental systems. <laughs> you got uh, the water tanks are under here, there's five water tanks. You got potable and wastewater. And you got, you know, I, don't, I don't know if you know what LIO, you know what LIO is, no IOH? Uh, it's, no. It's, it's, it's these canisters, they're CO2 absorbers. They, they store them in here, they're around canisters. They take them out and there's a thing in the floor here, they drop them in, which would scrub the air like they do on submarines. And you have, you have water pumps here, two water pumps, everything had a backup. And your, your humidity separators are under the floor, and there was there's lockers there, 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 where you're standing. So this is all storage. All storage the, the under here. Part. There's a couple spaces in between. That, that doesn't have anything there, but there's a locker there. One here. Water pumps here. Your lio scrubbers are here. Some more plumbing in here. Uh, the potty was behind this door here. Oh, really? The uh, the, the office. Yeah. Uh, this ring here held a hot water tank for water for the rehydration of the food. So they would, a needle would pierce the package, and they would dial in how many uh, ounces of water they wanted to get. Hot water would shoot in there and rehydrate and have a hot meal. Huh. Uh, a little more liver than the man. <laughs> Here's a food pantry. So this was the crew quarters. This is it. This and upstairs. Okay. Well, this, except when they went to the station, they go into the station. Right. But I bet as far as living and I mean everything, was, this is it. Yes. So where they can hook a light to it, out with there. And they could have to close themselves off so it'd be dark. Because they work around the clock, it would be like four on four off. They used to work eight. So it was just the two stories, and that's it. That's it. Wow. And a lot, yeah. of, a, lot of, a lot of the guys will sleep in their, a lot of the guys will sleep in their seats. 
Because they're weightless and it doesn't matter where they sleep. Some of them like they have restraining straps. Right now we're looking at the nose of Spatial Atlantis. No, it's on both sides. This is Space Shuttle Atlantis's belly, its underside, all these tiles, and these are its engines. If you take a look around, you can see the scaffolding around it. We were able to climb up and inside it. And of course, if you do a 180, these are the doors that Atlantis comes through and will soon leave and roll out to the museum that they're building here on Kennedy Space Center.